11. We're in chapter 4, ready for section 2. The first couple of problems you run into are review, so stop now if you haven't already and try those review problems. So pause the video. If they give you slope and they give you the y-intercept, you simply plug in for m and b. This would be the equation of that line and the graph should look like this. It hits the y-axis or intercepts the y-axis at negative 2 and then the slope is a negative slope. It's a falling slope. So you go down 4 to the right 5 or you can go up 4 and to the left 5 as long as you went negatively once. Now look at these multiple choice. Which one is the answer to that question? I hope that you were able to pick this one pretty quickly because it hits the y-axis at 1. So that immediately rules out those two. So it's either this one or that one. And it, even without checking my slope because I see that the line is positive, a positive slope is going uphill. So that means this has to be the correct option. Even if you don't check the rise and the run to be 3 over 1. Alright, so now we're ready for our new vocabulary. Linear <clears throat> extrapolation. Extrapolation. That's using linear equations to make a prediction that goes beyond the range of the data. For example, <clears throat> y equals 3x plus 1. Here's a little bitty graph that will let you graph y equals 3x plus 1. But when they ask us to find when x is 1002, that goes beyond this graph. It goes beyond anything that is obvious. But we can use linear extrapolation to figure that out. So since y equals 3x plus 1, and in place of x, I need a little bigger parentheses there, in place of x, I am plugging in this new 1002. So when you do that on your calculator, it'll give you the prediction for what y should be. So that's 3006 plus 1 would make 3007. Okay, is this proportional or non-proportional? Answer that question for me. I'm going to be checking to see if you know the answer um, tomorrow. Next page. Okay, now we need to write an equation given a point and a slope. Notice they didn't give us the y-intercept, so we need to find the y-intercept. So using y equals mx plus b, I'm going to pick the x and y, the only x and y that I have here. And in place of y, I'm going to plug in negative 3. m, they told me, is 1 half. And x, the only x I have to use is plus b. So I am looking for my y-intercept. I don't know what the y-intercept is. So you say half of 2 is 1. So then when we subtract 1 from both sides, b equals a negative 4. So negative 4 is my y-intercept. So when we go to write the equation, it's going to be y, I always leave y and x blank. <clears throat> Our slope, they said, is 1 half. And our y-intercept, we found out, is negative 4. Now remember, you only have one slope. It'll only hit the y-axis at one place. And then in this case, it's negative 4. But there are an infinite number of x's and y's that can be plugged in to make this statement true. <clears throat> I've highlighted number 2. I'm going to leave that for you to try on your own, doing exactly what I just did. Alright, I've highlighted B and D. I'm going to leave both of those for you to do. But let's look at A. To put this in uh, the equation of a line, I first need to know slope. And remember, that's the change in Y over the change in X. So my Y's are negative 8 minus a negative 4 over negative 2 minus a negative 3. And when you minus a negative, that becomes plus, so that's going to give me a negative 4 over 1. So my slope is negative 4. 
Okay, now I need to know my y-intercept. So I can play any, mini money mo. I need to pick one of those points. It doesn't matter which point you pick. And you're going to plug this in for your x and for your y temporarily till we can find b. So in this equation, y equals mx plus b. My y is going to be negative 8. My m, by the way, that's what negative 4 is. It's negative 4. I'm going to use this negative 2 for x long enough to find b, just till I find b. So negative 8 equals negative times negative makes positive 8 plus b. Subtract 8 from both sides, and b is negative 16. So my final equation, that's the answer to the problem. It says to write the equation of a line. I leave y for all the y's that it could be. I use my slope of negative 4, and I leave x for all the x's it could be, plus a negative 16, so you might as well just say minus 16. So that's the equation of that line. So notice I had to first find my slope so I could plug in this number. Then I had to pick a point, use that x and y long enough to find my b. There's only one y-intercept, there's only one slope, but there's an infinite number of x's and y's. And in case you don't feel confident about B and C, by the way, this is two points given to you as a table. I tried to give you a little hint here and show you that they're really just ordered pairs. Um, but C, first I need to find slope. So it's the change in Y, 14 minus a negative 1 over, which makes it plus, 3 minus a negative 2, which makes it plus. So it's 15 over 5. So that's going to be a slope of 3. Then I need to pick 1. I'm going to pick the negative 2 and negative 1. So in y equals mx plus b, my y is negative 1. My m is 3. My x I chose was negative 2. By the way, if you pick negative 1 for y, you have to use negative 2. You can't use one of each. You have to keep your couples together. And negative 1 equals negative 6 plus b. Add 6 to both sides. And b equals a positive 5. So my final answer is y equals m, which was 3x plus 5. This time I have a positive y-intercept. So that's the final answer to c. Okay word problem. Okay, sorry, a little music break. I love One Direction. Okay, economy. During one year, Malik's cost for gas, or for a gallon of self-served regular gasoline was $3.20. Whoops, I turned one direction down too much. We need to hear them a little bit. There they are. Okay, so $3.20 for a gallon uh, on the 1st of June. Then it went up to three forty-two dollars on the 1st of July. Write a linear equation to predict Malik's cost of gas the 1st of any month during the year. Using 1 to represent January. Alright, so if 1 is January, what is June? June would be the 6th month. And what is July? July would be the 7th month. So our hint here says make an ordered pair. So um, in June, the 6th month, it was 320. In July, the 7th month, it was 342. So the first thing I need to do is find my slope which will be um, 342 minus 320 over, and of course 7 uh, minus 6 is going to be 1, and that gives me 22 cents per month. Seems to be the rate that it's changing, but I need a linear equation. So where does it hit the y-axis? That's the 
next thing I need to know. So let's pick one of these points. I'm going to pick the first one just because 6 is smaller. So y equals m, which is 0.22, times x, which is 6, plus b. So we're going to have to solve for b. Subtract 1.32 from both sides. And our b here is uh, 1.88. So the final answer here, y equals my m, which is 22 cents, x plus 1.88. So you can take uh, our information about linear equations and apply it to an everyday problem. Okay, let's look at the next question that talks about gas with Malik. He uses 25 gallons of gasoline per month. Uh-oh, that's a lot. He budgeted $100 for gasoline in October. Use the equation from example 3. The equation was y equals 0.22x plus $1.88. Now, what was x? Let's go back and review. x was our month. So, if we're looking at October, it's the 10th month. And we do not know our why. We do not know the cost of gasoline in October. So let's see if we can figure it out. 0 0.22 times our 10th month gives us 2.2 plus 1.88. So y is 4.08. So that's $4 a gallon per gallon. Okay, how many gallons does he need? He needs 25 gallons. So 25 gallons times 408. I can tell you right now that's going to be greater than 100. And so it's exactly 102. So he needs to save two more dollars or add two more dollars to his budget to stay within budget for gasoline in October. Okay, and I've highlighted these last two. They are related. Talking about textbooks. Um, let me give you a hint. Your ordered pairs are going to look like this. If you use uh, the year for your X, then the cost of textbooks will be your Y. So your other X will be 2008 in this example problem. 68.15 is your y. So now there's two points. It's just like the first page, or actually the second page where you had to find your slope. And here's a little hint what the equation might should look like. So I will be checking to see that you attempted these two problems on your own. I hope you have a blessed day.